Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Happy Sunday, guys. I hope you're all enjoying uh, Father's Day if you're celebrating with your dad or uh, maybe you're a father yourself. So the crypto space, as you guys are uh, probably all aware of by now, has been uh, pretty silent. Not too much coming out, you know, other than Bitcoin continuing to move downwards. I mean, just bringing up the price chart here real quickly, we did see a bit of a rebound. This is Bitcoin on the daily. If I throw that on the hourly, you guys can see we have been seeing a bit of a rebound upward. Bitcoin did reach as low as $17,600. And then it uh, rebounded up uh, closer back to uh, 20000 Right now it's hovering at around $19,400, if you guys can see over there. So, you know, that's pretty much what's going on. Um, it's pretty quiet so far, but, you know, that has not stopped scammers from continuing to try to scam cryptocurrencies from you guys. And so I just saw this from Digital Perspectives here on Twitter. Crypto holders, beware. If you are ever contacted about your crypto, start by assuming it is a scam first. Don't panic. That's what the scammer needs in order for the scam to work. Be safe out there, everybody. And so uh, he just retweeted out this CNBC uh, news piece. This crypto nightmare starts with a phone call. Fraudsters are using bots to steal your two-factor authentication code and drain your account. So even if you have a two-factor authentication code uh, on your exchange, you might think to yourself, okay, well, you know, my cryptocurrency is safe because I use uh, 2FA. You better think twice about that. And uh, again, this is why I use a uh, cold storage solution to store my cryptocurrency. I personally use the Ledger Nano. I have an affiliate link in the description of the video, and I've noticed uh, a lot of you guys have been using my affiliate link. I want to thank you guys for that. Some of you guys still might not have a cold wallet storage solution. And, uh, you know, when I see stories like this, it just reminds me how important it is, especially now, you know, when people are feeling vulnerable, your accounts are down. We don't want to lose what we have in there. And, uh, you know, the scammers know that is valuable cryptocurrency that will eventually rebound one day. And so, you know, you and I, we got to focus on down cost averaging, preserving our cryptocurrency. So just make sure, guys, you're not falling for it. I uh, wanted to thank Digital Perspectives there, uh, Brad, for uh, letting us know about that. And guys, I've just been scrolling through, you know, all these different um, crypto news sites, and I'm noticing the sentiment. I'm not uh, going to speak about any particular article, but the sentiment is very mixed, which I don't usually see. It's usually very positive or very negative, depending on the trend of the market. And I feel like it's because we're in this unusual position right now in crypto where, you know, people, critics, analysts, whatever... They can't really gauge what is coming next. So, you know, if you look at some of these articles, some are positive, some are negative, and a lot are just very neutral. What to expect next? Bitcoin's going to zero. This could be the bottom. It's just going to go up from here. So a lot of confusion going on. Of course, El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukele, he's addressing the bear market with a little bit of hopium, as they say. We know the story about El Salvador and how they introduced Bitcoin as legal tender back in September. Well, here's the latest tweet from Nayib Bukele, the president of El Salvador. He wrote this the other day. I see that some people are worried or anxious about the Bitcoin market price. My advice to you, stop looking at the graph and enjoy life. If you invested in Bitcoin, your investment is safe and its value will immensely grow after the bear market. Patience is key. So even Nayeb Bukele out there, uh, you know, posting this on Twitter, letting the people of El Salvador know this isn't the end, guys. Your investment is safe because we know the cryptocurrency market is going to rally one day in the future. And again, this is why a great time to keep cost averaging down. And, you know, it never surprises me every single time. Well, I mean, I've been in technically two bear markets right now. But retail, they get shaken out. This is usually where the negative sentiment lies. And, you know, when you're on Twitter, when you're on YouTube, uh, what have you, this is usually the, uh, the the retail folks. They're usually there in that space. And so, you know, when you're feeling the negative sentiment, it's usually because you're probably reading a lot of those tweets and, uh, you know, the feelings that people have, because especially if they've invested more than they can afford to lose, um, you know, you're going to get a negative and overall negative sentiment. So it's important to have perspective on this, of course, it doesn't help that uh, Tether has also been experiencing the DDoS attacks. And Tether, a bit of a wild card at this moment in time. So hodlers of USDT were sent into a frenzy yesterday after Tether's chief technical officer, Paolo Ardonio, confirmed the incidence of a DDoS attack. Simply put, a DDoS attack happens when a server or a network is flooded with requests to disrupt the server's regular traffic. And uh, he says that they usually get about 2,000 requests every five minutes. And uh, Tether had received about 8 million requests uh, for a five-minute period. And so uh, there was a problem there temporarily. 
Assuring that all was back to normal, Arduino informed users in another tweet that the attack was mitigated. So they put a stop to that, and uh, I will link this in the description if you guys want to know more details about that, but I just wanted to touch on that a little bit. Uh, let's get rid of that. Next tweet up here, guys, just with regards to the broader space, this is what's coming out of the BIS right now, just retweeted out by Crypto Eddy, retweeting out the Bank for International Settlements tweet. Augustin Karstens, the head of the BIS, okay, just put out this statement, part of their annual economic report 2022, listen to this. Trust in money remains the bedrock of stability. My main message today is simple. The soul of money belongs neither to a big tech nor to an anonymous ledger. The soul of money is trust. And central banks have been and continue to be the institution's best place to provide trust in the digital age. And you can learn more if you want to read the BIS's annual economic report coming out June 26th, 2022. Crypto Eddie mentioning up here, does that Kool-Aid come with one of those tiny umbrellas? <laughs> um, so the BIS obviously have their mandate. They do not want uh, currency to fall in the hands of independent actors. They want to maintain control, as uh, clearly stated here by uh, Augustin Karstens. It cannot be, what did he say? It cannot be on an anonymous ledger. The soul of money is trust, and you can trust the central banks. We cannot trust private institutions either with money. Uh, meanwhile, Darren Moore here uh, posting this for a while. They said crypto was BS. Now they are investing billions to develop it. So another tweet here from uh, the BIS, the Bank for International Settlements. This has to do with their innovation hub and how they're announcing new projects and expanding cybersecurity and green finance experiments as well. And so, you know, a lot of this is um, surrounding the concept of a stable coin or rather more accurately, I think, a CBDC, a central bank digital currency. And we know a lot of the central banks are already working on these nationally, likely going to replace a typical fiat currency with something new, a central bank digital currency that we are all assuming will be one-to-one -to, -one to the current dollars that we already have. So, I mean, think about this theoretically. If you know nothing about this world and, uh, you know, the bank comes along and says, well, do you want to convert the money that you have in your bank account to a CBDC? You're thinking to yourself, okay, you know, I've got, let's say, $10,000 in my bank account. Sure, I'll just convert the 10,000 to 10,000 CBDCs. That's, that's perfectly fine with me. The thing, though, that they have not told us is what exactly is a CBDC going to be worth? We got to remember, we are in an unprecedented time. Lots of inflation because of exorbitant amounts of money printing. And so at the end of the day, if their whole plan is to collapse this financial system, do you really think that they are going to just convert us equally one dollar equals one cbdc or will it be worth half the value or a third of the value or even a quarter of the value think about this for every dollar that you have in your bank account what's to say that they won't give us 0 0.25 cbdc's so on and so forth so this these are all things i think that um you know a lot of us haven't really thought about it. I mean, maybe some of some of you guys have thought about that. This is why we're hedging against central bank digital currencies with uh, investments in other currencies. And of course, there's XRP as well, right? The bridge currency that is going to facilitate payments on these brand new financial mechanisms. And we can count on Ripple and XRP in a lot of ways, right? Because they're cozy with the Bank for International Settlement. So, you know, it's not like the uh, these guys are looking to stifle the entire world of cryptocurrency. They just want to make sure that the Bitcoins of the world and the Moneros of the world, which uh, for those of you guys who might not know, Monero is a privacy coin, are kept in check. So some interesting news here. I wanted to thank Darren, obviously, and Crypto Eddy, of course, just for bringing us those two articles. Um, and T-Hole Bedic Tier 2, Bank for International Settlements, Financial Stability Institute report on cross-border remittances. So just uh, speaking more towards the idea of cross-border payments, some counterparts reported significant growth in virtual currency transmission, including cryptocurrencies across the board. And the U.S. regulations are in place regarding cryptocurrencies for this purpose. So this is what he points out here uh, directly from the BIS's website. Some counterparts interviewed reported significant growth in virtual currency transmission, including cryptocurrencies across borders. And uh, just over here, U.S. federal regulators have defined money transmission as applying to activities that facilitate the transmission of money or monetary value. The inclusion of monetary value in the definition was designed to allow for the entry of new innovative business models that can be used to send the equivalent of money even if it is not fiat currency. 
So this is what US federal uh, regulators are working on right now. And uh, this is as per the Bank for International Settlements. You guys can see directly from their website here. So we can, I think, safely understand that the transmission of money, that bridge currency XRP, is likely going to come through with a positive result. Um, you know, despite what the SEC is doing right now, you know, some people are saying it's theater and that we should not even be paying attention to it. However, I know it's kind of hard not to be paying attention to, right? Well, what about this? Bank of America, which is a Ripple partner, by the way, they just did a report that shows crypto is far from dead. And I talked about the Bank of America report briefly in a video I did last week. Just again, though, to get a little more detail and context of what I'm about to talk to you guys about next. According to a report by Coindesk earlier this week, the Bank of America released a report showing that consumer interest in crypto has managed to rise despite the market correction, with many of those surveyed indicating an intention to buy or use digital assets in the future. Okay, 91% of the people uh, interviewed said they had an intention of purchasing crypto in the next six months. So despite the bear trend, despite all this negativity, let me throw Bitcoin back on the daily here. Despite all this, guys, in the next six months, 91% of people realize the bottom is in and uh, are looking to purchase, or the bottom is at least close to being in. Okay, don't quote me on the bottom being in. Please don't quote me on that. Furthermore, the same percentage of respondents indicated that they had bought uh, crypto assets within the last six months. A full 30% indicated that they had no intention to sell their crypto within the next six months, with a similar number of respondents saying that they had not sold any digital currencies in the previous six months. So... We are seeing a trend here. A lot of people staying very, very bullish on cryptocurrencies. Of those surveyed, 65% reported having less than one-tenth, so only 10% of their investment portfolio in digital assets, with only 15% saying they held one quarter of their investment in digital assets. The vast majority of respondents indicated that they were short-term investors in crypto, with 70% claiming they have held digital assets for less than one year. Well, I mean, that uh, makes sense to me, considering we just did experience uh, quite a bullish pump. Uh, and he, although that was over the last uh, two years, let's call it, most people really didn't get into it uh, until about a year, year and a half ago. So... This is the reality of the matter. More people are interested in cryptocurrency. More people plan on purchasing more cryptocurrency. Assets like XRP are continuously moving because of the partnerships, because of the real world utility. So that's the other thing, right? The real world utility, this is what's going to get crypto moving in that next generation of finance. I think that could fuel the next bull run. So we're continuously seeing stuff like this. Martin Volk just posting this uh, and another one, 218 million XRP were wired by anonymous wallets and these two exchanges and the, the exchanges they talk about down here, I believe is uh, two ODL exchanges. Yeah, Bitso and Bitstamp. And so uh, you guys can just see the whale alerts here. 61.7 million XRP transferred uh, from a Bitso wallet to an unknown wallet. Uh, another 60 million XRP transferred on another occasion. 36.1 million transferred from Bitstamp to an unknown wallet. Uh, and another 60 million XRP transferred from an unknown wallet to Bitstamp. So we're continuously seeing large quantities of XRP moving. I'd almost be willing to wager that uh, this has to do with ODL, considering the, uh, the exchanges that it's going through. Um, so, you know, just to put to the point here, crypto utility, this is where the future is. This is, um, you know, we're, we're seeing this, we have been seeing this for XRP specifically, but I think we're going to start seeing this a lot more often in the future. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin. And, um, you know, just yesterday I did a video, $20,000 was breached. There was the Three Arrows Capital uh, story as well. So that also plays into it. And if you guys want to see a video on that, I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner. This from Washi Gorira here on Twitter, Bitcoin bottoms around the corner. When the 100 moving average crosses up the 20 moving average, bottom was extremely close. It happened two times in Bitcoin's history and it has just happened again. The RSI is below the 30 level, prices in the reload zone. And so this is of interest uh, to professional traders and uh, I'm sure retail traders as well. Looking at former bottoms from 2015, 2019, and uh, now we're uh, projecting that, considering these two moving averages now have crossed over, could this be the bottom before the trend upward? Uh, also the RSI dipping down to uh, the, a similar level that it saw three times previous, or now this is the third time that we're seeing this level hit. So uh, again, we saw that level cross over there, the 20 day moving average, 100 day moving average. And today, again, guys, we're seeing the same kind of thing, Bitcoin going below $20,000. So an interesting observation there. Secrets here on Twitter bringing this up, Bitcoin has retraced nearly 75%, Ethereum over 80%. 
There is extreme fear in the markets. They have crashed too hard too fast. These are the times when you slowly build a position for long-term gains. I could not agree more, guys. And, um, you know, I'm not the only one saying this. Kevin O'Leary has come out and he's gone on the record and he explains why he's buying the dip in Bitcoin and Ethereum and says the collapse of risky tokens will help the crypto market in the long run. So it's not just Ethereum and Bitcoin, by the way, that he's buying. Okay, listen, listen to this. Shark Tank investor Kevin O'Leary, otherwise known as Mr. Wonderful, isn't sweating the cryptocurrency bear market. If anything, he thinks it will end up propping up the whole crypto sector in the long run. The venture capitalist explained that he's been doubling down on tokens. So kind of exactly what we're looking to do. You know, you find a good project and uh, you down cost average on those particular projects, including Bitcoin and Ethereum, as well as various Web3 projects, even though he acknowledges that not every investment will be a winning bet. So Kevin is diversifying, but listen to the types of coins that he is going to be diversifying into. And so it gets me thinking, could one of them be a cryptocurrency that is going to be a bridge currency that will eventually run the financial system in the future? I'm not selling anything, he said. Long term, you just have to stomach it. You have to understand you'll get volatility and that some projects aren't going to work. So he's saying this straight up. You know, I'm gonna be investing in some things and some projects just aren't going to work, but I'm gonna take the risk. His portfolio reflects his bullishness on blockchain technologies more broadly. He currently holds 32 positions in the digital asset space, including Solana and blockchain firm Polygon. Meanwhile, the O'Leary-backed WonderFi just became uh, the first crypto trading platform to be featured on the TSX. But as the crypto bear market has slammed valuations, digital assets now make up 16% of his holdings, down from 20% six months ago. But he said, still, the long-term view is that blockchain has economic value. So, despite his investments, you know, they're going to put this in the headline because they know Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two top cryptocurrencies. Nevertheless, I like hearing this because... Bitcoin, or sorry, Kevin O'Leary is saying that this entire industry has economic value. And basically, that is another way of saying, at least in my opinion, that the cryptocurrencies that have value, those are going to be the ones that are really going to thrive. So again, the XRPs of the world, the XLMs of the world, the Algorands, the VeChains, even Solana here, Kevin O'Leary has uh, has stated on the record that he is investing in Solana. And uh, Solana is one of those WEF coins as well. So O'Leary noted that uh, the recent crypto collapses, such as that of uh, stablecoin Terra and the Luna uh, sister token Luna, are events that teach investors caution and can actually help further the technology underpinning digital assets. So uh, talking about that, you know, saying basically uh, Luna failed and now we cannot, uh, this is a good indicator of why we can't rely on that type of technology. In a context of a global financial market, he added the collapse of a token won't change the status quo, even when tens of billions of dollars disappear from the market and some investors lose money. But he said the lesson is sound. It's nothing, a rounding error in the context of a sovereign wealth. The smaller projects that fail will help strengthen the market, he says, and the, project that, uh, fl and the projects that flounder may eventually be regulated out of existence, O'Leary said. Uh, such collapses can help indicate when the crypto uh, sell-off hits bottom as a defining capitulation will signal the start of a rebound. So this is the other thing, right? He has uh, gone on the record and, uh, you know, we've talked a little bit about Kevin O'Leary and what he's said in the past. And I'll uh, link a recent video that I did about him up here in the top right hand corner. We are going to see a moment where another big player collapses and that is going to drain everything, almost everything out of the crypto market. But then from the ashes, the phoenix will rise. Basically, the coins that stick around, and we've already got a good indication of what those coins will be. You know, again, make note of the WEF coins, the six that are outlined in the World Economic Forum's uh, piece that they printed back in 2021. Ultimately, the veteran investor isn't just betting on crypto or the blockchain, but the human resources that he sees piling into the sector. And then he talks about MIT graduating class of engineers. You see most people want to work in the blockchain. So what does that tell you about the industry? industry. Very sage advice here from Kevin O'Leary, which just solidifies my point. Not all cryptocurrencies are going to be winners, but if you pick the cryptos that solve the problems, those, my friends, will likely be the cryptos that have value in the future. Nicholas Merton here also saying no one's paying attention to the fact that Bitcoin and Ethereum are getting crushed, while altcoins have been neutral or up over the last six days. Yes, the macro-driven downturn, but someone is purposefully chasing liquidations to exacerbate the sell-off and force players out. 
So also note this, guys. Okay, going back to the chart here, uh, and again, Bitcoin on the daily. Let's just bring up XRP on the daily real quick here. You can see XRP is not actually crashing as much as Bitcoin or Ethereum. Now, I have this uh, price tool down here. Let me just show you guys what I'm measuring here. Remember this first collapse back on May the 12th? All cryptos collapsed and then rebounded back up and then found another leg down. Well, XRP, guys, from the bottom of that tail of that candlestick has only seen another about a 6% decline, okay? Right now, XRP is trading at about uh, 0.312, so about 31 cents. And uh, at that point, it did bottom out at about 33.3, so about 33 cents. So it's only trading about 6% below that, uh, that bottom that we saw back on May 12th. Can we say the same for Bitcoin? Okay, so here's the wick from May 12th. And as you guys can see, Bitcoin is now down a lot further even percentage wise than XRP. So XRP was only down about two cents, which represented about 6%. Bitcoin is down 23.6% since that May 12 bottom, which in turn ultimately means that this particular altcoin is retaining its value. Now, that's not to say that all altcoins are retaining their value in the same way. Uh, some altcoins are up, as per Nicholas's tweet here. Some are neutral, but he has noticed this. And I know some people in the XRP community have also noticed this as well. The XRP to BTC chart, we are actually seeing XRP move up against Bitcoin, so gaining dominance on Bitcoin. And we're also seeing the same for XRP to Ethereum. Uh, gaining dominance on Ethereum, which means guys, XRP maintaining its value at that bottom price of about 30, 31, 32, 33 cents. Whereas the rest of the crypto market, Bitcoin, Ethereum crashing down further in comparison. Some are even saying on Twitter that XRP is starting to decouple from Bitcoin. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it might still be a little too early to suggest that, but I'm thinking is the real world utility, you know, despite the lawsuit, I think the lawsuit's going to get thrown out. And I think a lot of people realize that. Are we starting to see some of these cryptocurrencies with real world utility maintain their value despite the cryptocurrency crash? The two big guys, they're sinking like a stone, but we are seeing dominance for XRP and some other cryptocurrencies move up comparatively. So as per Kevin O'Leary's point here, investing in, well, he is investing in Bitcoin and Ether, but he currently holds 30 other positions that are not Bitcoin and Ether. He's looking for long-term value. He's realizing that there is a lot of money in the crypto space. He is hedging his bets, trying to pick as many winners, obviously, as possible. So it begs the question, are we starting to see utility coins finally have their day in the sun? Tell me down in the comments what you guys think, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Boy, at the beginning of the year, I was hopeful that I would see 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2022, but now with the bear market, I'm not so sure. I'm going to keep trying though, guys, so if you are not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe if you're finding yourself watching the videos. Like the videos too, uh, thumbs up always helps the uh, YouTube algorithm. If you like the content I'm providing, I always love hearing your comments, so please put a comment down in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next one, guys.